Hello everybody and welcome back to Internet Mysteries. As you could probably already tell, I've been having quite a few problems recently, but hopefully they've resolved themselves now. Because today I have a very special episode in store. The mystery of the missing Clockman film. On the internet, it's a pretty common occurrence for users that forgot the name of a show from their childhood to go on forums, and with a basic description of what they remember, receive an answer of what the name of it was. But what if, after giving a detailed report on the program, no one seems to know what it is and the piece of media appears to be lost? Well, that is where the clock man comes into play. Over the past decade and a half, people online have been giving reports about a supposed cartoon that they watched in their childhood. Yet even with multiple testimonies since 2002, there's no proof of it actually existing. So what do we know about this supposed piece of lost media? Well, according to reports from people who claim to have seen it as a child, The Clockman is an animated short that was said to have aired sometime in the 1980s, on a show named Pinwheel. For those of you who don't know what Pinwheel is, it's a very obscure Nickelodeon TV show that aired from 1977 to 1999. The show was similar to Sesame Street with puppet and human skits in between shorts and segments. The show was never officially released online in any fashion, so even outside of The Clockman, a majority of the series is lost. While descriptions of this short vary from person to person, the most accepted plotline is as follows. A young child loses a pair of her new shoes given to her by her mother. After searching and being unable to find them, she decides to go and ask her local wizard for help. He decides to help her and gives her a new pair on one condition. She return home and tell her mother the truth. The child takes the shoes but does not tell her. This leads to a scene of the wizard appearing out of the girl's bedroom clock, hence the name, The Clockman. So you may ask if they know what the film was about in the program it was played on, why don't they just go through the old episodes? Well, it's not that simple. As already mentioned, Pinwheel is very obscure and poorly documented overall. Not all the episodes of the show have been uploaded online, which makes this search very difficult. Even when some try to make a few calls to people involved with Pinwheel's production, no one really knew whether or not a short like this did in fact air. The fact that no one could confirm its existence made many wonder if this was even a real thing. All there was to go on was multiple accounts of people claiming that they saw it as a child. Testimonies were what really fueled the Clockman's initial hype and legend, and how we got almost all the information about it. As said earlier, the Clockman was actually first mentioned around 2002 to 2004 online. Despite this, it wouldn't be until 2012 when interest in the short really kicked in. When on Bungie's off-topic forum known as The Flood, a user named Commander Santa started a thread describing the Clockman cartoon. In the post he said, I am looking for a particular animated short that terrified me as a child. I've been looking on and off for it for nearly four years. Maybe it doesn't exist. Maybe nobody should ever find it. But if someone can, it's the Flood. He then goes on to list four clues and a basic drawing of what he remembered from the cartoon. His clues were as follows. 1. It aired on an old Nickelodeon show in the mid to early 1980s, target year around 1984. The show was called Pinwheel. 2. Pinwheel collected stop motion and 2D shorts from all over the world, so he commented that it was most likely not American. 3. He already searched through Wikipedia, TV Junk, Retro Junk, Big Cartoon Database, Toonerific, and YouTube with no success. And finally, number 4, he discovered that three unrelated children's shows on three different networks shared shorts from around the globe. Many people were skeptical of the story. The inclusion of a creepy character that pops out of a clock sounded more like a campfire story than a true piece of lost media but he insisted that he was 99% positive he remembered this short correctly. He went on to give even more details. I was homesick with the flu as a young child when I first saw a clock man. I was scared to sleep for weeks. I have to find him again to get him out of my mind. The clock man abducted the little boy and took him places he did not want to go. I can't remember where exactly, but I seem to remember the boy repeatedly asking to go home. Clockman just ignored him like he couldn't hear him. He kept dragging the boy through all kinds of scary places. I remember being scared for the boy and just wishing the Clockman would take him home. 
Clockman did bring the boy home. Just before the sun came up and then disappeared back inside the clock above the boy's bed. The short film ended when the sun came up and the boy's father came in to wish him good morning. He never got to tell anyone about the clock man before the story ended. His account varied slightly from others who claimed to have seen the film in early years, but the outline was similar enough to make many believers that the clock man did in fact exist. Commander Santo was described as one of the most well-respected members on the Flood form so many were willing to at least help him look into his claims. Many TV shows and episodes were pitched to Santa as what he saw, though none truly matched his memory. A day after the thread was posted, Santa gave more details he remembered about the Clockman, saying, I am almost certain the animations were felt like. Clockman had a big black bushy beard and creepy eyes. He wore dark clothes and I'm fairly certain he had a cape. He then made a very rudimentary comic depicting what he remembered, and then described the animation style being along the lines of a 1970s version of South Park. At this point, people were getting invested in finding out what this cartoon was, and even 4chan became involved in the hunt. One person on the X board even remembered the short himself. Six days after the original post, with the search gaining traction, Santa ordered some pinwheel DVDs that were for sale. He also emailed a producer of Pinwheel, although eventually both efforts proved to be fruitless. Things were beginning to slow down until the 18th of January when they found Michael Howe's post accounting Clockman on the Animation Nation site. It was paraded as the most accurate description of the shore according to Commander Santa, and it reinvigorated the search, with many now contacting animation universities that may provide information. But this all led to just another dead end. And with that, there was a hiatus in the search, and you may be asking right now if this cartoon will ever be rediscovered, or if it's even real. Well, you'll find out after a brief word from our sponsor. There's nothing better than sitting next to a warm fire and reading a good book. Unfortunately for me, I can't read, but that's why audiobooks exist from audible.com. Audible's selection of audiobooks, original shows, news, comedy, and more is unmatched anywhere. You will find what you are looking for no matter what genre you are interested in. I've personally been listening to Norm Macdonald's memoir based on a true story. Although the subtitle was originally a memoir, but it seems now they changed it to not a memoir. I would assume this is because you're not always sure when Norm is telling the truth in the book. Either way, it's without a doubt one of the funniest things I've ever listened to. One of my favorite features of Audible is that you can choose to listen faster or slower. Narration at a speed that suits you really makes the experience more enjoyable because you can always speed it up through uninteresting parts or slow it down during more complex material. Get a free audiobook with a 30-day free trial at audible.com slash gfm or text gfm, all one word, to 500-500. That's audible.com slash gfm or text gfm to 500-500. I would like to give a sincere big thank you to audible.com for supporting the show, and please check out the link in the description down below if you want to try it out for yourself. Skipping forward a few years in time, a lost media researcher that goes by Die Kate was looking for a new missing cartoon to dig up information about, and he decided on the cold case of Clockman. It had been quite a while since Santa's efforts, and there were still very few leads he could go after. He first tried contacting various TV stations that had broadcasted the Nickelodeon show Pinwheel, but had no success in learning new information. There wouldn't be much progress until he decided to go after one of the few leads that had still been untouched, Michael Howe. The user who talked about the short on Animation Nation a decade earlier. Dicate had been attempting to contact Michael for months, but wasn't successful, as Michael never recognized the contact info in his emails. But eventually, they finally got in touch and began discussing Pinwheel, making an official synopsis of the Clockman short. He then began individually contacting people involved with the production slash broadcast of Pinwheel, with his summary of the cartoon supplied and was immediately successful in contacting Michael Karp, 
who wrote, directed, and voice acted for various pinwheel-related projects. Mr. Carp said, Oddly enough, I have a very vague memory of the short you described. Snatches of memory of the wizard appearing and disappearing especially. I'm thinking that the film was purchased for Pinwheel. He then directed Die Kate to Tippy Fortune, an executive producer of Pinwheel. Tippy told Die Kate this, Most of our films were acquired from COE Films, who had a library of shorts from around the world, the UK, Scandinavia, and Eastern Europe, and was a thriving business selling to various cable companies, such as HBO. As for COE Films, sadly, the owner had passed away in 2001, leading to yet another dead end. Dicate was running out of leads, and it seemed like the search for the clock man was dead yet again. Still, some decided to keep on digging. Finally, on December 10th, 2017, a Lost Media Wiki user named Nitrate Nerd had the idea to try searching a worldwide library catalog for the clock man. And going through this website, a listing by the name of Sally showed up, with a synopsis that appeared to have matched Clockman. After a brief online search, he found that this short film was uploaded by the current owners, AAA Studios, on YouTube. When the video was brought to Commander Santa, he confirmed that yes, after all these years, this was finally the true Clockman. When Sally went to bed that night, she hoped the wizard would forget about their deal. forget. He picked her up and carried her to his magic chamber. According to the Lost Media Wiki page on the film, in 1976, a Czechoslovakian animation company produced a short film. Then the movie was exported around the world, yet none of the creators knew exactly where their film would end up, due to Czechoslovakia being a communist nation at the time. After years of the movie being shown around the world, including being put on pinwheel, it ended up in the hands of AAA Studios, who upon finding out about the search at the end of 2017, uploaded the English dub of the film on YouTube in January of the following year. While the synopsis during the search of it was fairly accurate overall, you'll find that the clock is only a small part of the short, and that all the fixation on the clock man was actually a bit misguided. Even with all that being said, it will always be remembered by the name given to it during the search. So there you have the story of the missing clock man film. And if you're interested in watching it for yourself, it's now available up for free on YouTube for the world to see. So until next time, thanks for watching.